All right, let's jump back into I this. I don't know what happened oh. to me last time. My behavior was not compliant. Please accept my apologies. No, girl, you we we, we cool, we cool. You and I. Why? Why you gotta look? Why you gotta look like that? Why you? She looks so conflicted. Over what though? What? It's like she wants to say say something. What are you trying to say? Yo, this title screen's fascinating. Oh, we're back to Hank and Connor. Okay. Where? Not a clue. But that hula girl don't care. She got a swing in her hips and a non-existent breeze in this car. So, what's up? Is everything okay, Lieutenant? Chris was on patrol last night. He was attacked by a bunch of deviants. See one Said of he those. was saved by Marcus himself. Get out of town. Is Chris okay? Yeah, he's in shock, but he's alive. What the hell? Ooh, instinct lead Kamsky. Whoa, hold on, don't bury the lead. Kamsky left Cyberlife ten years ago. Why did you want to meet him? Oh, that's the first android to pass the Turing test, and he's the founder. That's why this of looks so familiar. There's the lake. Anybody can tell us about deviants. It's him. All right, I thought this. I recognize this building. It's from the news article about Kamsky. I knew all that Kamsky stuff was going to lead somewhere. Okay, all right, I'm in. Let's do this. What? That was just the NBC jingle. Girl from the intro screen? Hi. Uh, I'm uh, Lieutenant Hank Anderson, Detroit Police Department. I'm here to see uh, Mr. Elijah Kamsky. Please, come in. Okay. I'll let Elijah know you're here, but please make yourself comfortable. Joined, wait for the android who is in my game. The android from my game. All right, well, let's snoop. We've got two things to look at a place to sit down. Can I look at the art and things here? Rocks and. Nice girl. Sincere. You're right. She's really pretty. Can I look at these weird ass things? Nice place. I can. Guess androids haven't been a bad thing for everybody. You're about to meet. Uh, that's just straight up Amanda, is who that is. Amanda. Hmm. I have questions, though. I still feel like that whole plot line's all in his head. Connor? How's it feel? To meet my maker? Impatient. Kamsky is one of the great geniuses of the 21st century. It'll be interesting to meet him in person. Elijah Kamsky, of course. Just a big, garish Sometimes version of I himself. I wish I could meet my creator face to face. I'd have a couple of things I'd want to tell him. Space tourism on the rise. And... Cyberlife's fortune teller computer. Ooh, interesting. With the advent of reusable space shuttles, space tourism is becoming a reality for those able to afford it. Luxury travel brand Clear Skies is offering the first commercially available flight into space. The experience includes a three-hour orbit of the moon, affording spectacular views of Earth through a specially designed observation deck. As competition increases in this growing market, consumers can expect such trips to become more and more affordable. 
but consumer rights activists are already decrying such boutique experiences as a sign of the widening social equality gap. A spokesman for Aid on Poverty, AOP, said while the top 1% are enjoying Earth from space, the rest of us are down here suffering from pollution, famine, and poverty. Clear Skies was not available for comment, but the new slogan for their spacefaring holidays looks increasingly apt. Get away from it all. Uh -oh. Cyberlife's Fortune Teller Computer Cyberlife has unveiled a new quantum supercomputer capable of exaflops, one billion billion operations per second, the equivalent of several human minds in a single machine. The computer was specifically designed to analyze vast data from various sources and generate predictions. Philip Seymour, CyberLife's director of Futurology said, we designed it to destroy mankind. The computer will be used to calculate probability of mass extinction events. Yeah, it will. Mm-hmm. The computer can help us to anticipate and prepare for such calamities, ensuring humanity is never caught off guard, except for the one they created themselves. Despite doomsday predictions from those fearing that AI is gaining too much influence already, those people are probably right, but everyone else is like, eh, my laundry gets done. Oh, oh, I guess I'm sitting, sitting down now. Okay. Uh, so, Hank, how are you? Have we really run out of small talk? Can I look at this tree? Oh, she's here. Glad you will see you now. Are we gonna talk about how you're also in my game? Do you know that you're in my game? Ooh, that is a creepy Mr. stare. Mr. Kamsky! Oh, what the hell? Just a moment, please. There's so many of you. What? Also, I love the symbolism of the red water. I guess it's probably painted. The bottom is probably painted red, but I love the idea that because they have blue blood, they're in red water. That's pretty cool, actually. I pick up on those things from time to time. Oof, he is definitely one of those rich people that's like, well, I have important things going on, so you're going to have to wait for me. Cool. I'm Lieutenant Anderson. This is Connor. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Sir, we're investigating deviants. I know you left Cyberlife years ago, but I was hoping you'd be able to tell us something we don't know. Deviants. Oh boy, here we go. Fascinating, aren't they? Oh boy. Perfect beings with infinite intelligence. And now they have free will. Machines are so superior to us. Confrontation was inevitable. Humanity's greatest achievement threatens to be its downfall. Isn't it ironic? Uh, I mean, look, we're just here for your help, dude. <laughs> we need to understand how androids become deviants. Do you know anything that could help us? All ideas of viruses spread like epidemics. Is the desire to be free a contagious disease? Listen, I didn't come here to talk philosophy. The machines you created may be planning a revolution. Either you can tell us something that'll be helpful, or we will be on our way. What about you, Connor? What? Don't make this about me! Whose side are you on? Oh, just be direct with this dude. I'm on the human side, of course. <laughs> well, that's what you're programmed to say. Oh my god. But you. What do you really want? Aggressive, defensive, troubled? Let's do defensive. I'm sorry, but I don't see what you're getting at. Shit. Oh shit! Chloe? I'm sure you're familiar with the Turing test. Your formality. 
Simple question of algorithms and computing capacity. What interests me is whether machines are capable of empathy. I call it the Kamsky test. It's very simple, you'll see. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. Young and beautiful forever. A flower that will never wither. What is it really? A piece of plastic containing a human? Or a living being? With a soul? What? It's up to you to answer that fascinating question, Connor. Destroy this machine, and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel it's alive. Oh, how dare you, David Cage? How but dare you? here without having learned anything from me. How dare you, David Cage? Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out of here. What's more important to you, Connor? Your investigation or the life of this android? Decide who you are. An obedient machine. Or a living being. Endowed with free will. That's enough. Connor, we're leaving. Pull the trigger. Connor! Don't! And I'll tell you what you want to know. Oh, this is unfair! If I shoot, I get answers. But if I don't shoot, he gets to study the empathy in Connor. And perhaps... Oh, is this a trap? Is this a trap? I, I can't... I can't, right? I can't... Screw it. Fascinating. Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity is itself a deviant. I'm... I'm not a deviant. You prefer to spare a machine rather than accomplish your mission. You saw a living being in this android. You showed empathy. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people or stand up against your creators? What can be worse than having to choose between two evils? Let's get out of here. By the way, I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. Is that supposed to be the clue? Is that the thing I just won for doing that? Why didn't you shoot? Dude! I just saw that girl's eyes, and I couldn't. That's all. You're always saying you would do anything to accomplish your mission. That was our chance to learn something, and you let it go. Yeah, I know what I should have done. I told you I couldn't. I'm sorry, okay? thing yo <laughs> oh I didn't expect that that's the level whoa hold the phone kinship okay so first off there was another route the hell what the hell would that have been the cop was spared i learned chris survived oh so that yellow is from a previous chapter and that's why i learned he survived had he been killed perhaps it would have been chris killed right so what's this top thing i don't know all right so i did all this analyze the sculpture i didn't really analyze it. i just looked at stuff but okay Kamsky test, spare Chloe, 
leave his house. Hank thought Connor made the right decision. So this one would be shoot, and then that leads to questions? Man! Okay, if you want to know what's going through my head through all that, Kamsky is the founder of CyberLife. He's the guy who created these machines. He is the through line through all of this. He is the one who gave Marcus to Carl. He is the one who designed the line of androids that went from Marcus to Connor because I guess Connor is Connor is of the same line as Marcus. And Marcus was an earlier version, so perhaps this is all Kamsky? He studies empathy. He literally said ideas are a virus is freedom a virus. Do you think he's trying to make all this happen? And he's pitting Marcus and Connor against each other for like a test? Oh, I have some... Oh, I just don't know. Oh, do you think this is Arrive Without Hank? I have no idea what that would be. But if it's Arrive With Hank, I man, this is Without? I don't know. So most people talk to Hank. I guess you have to. And most people spared Chloe. All right. Let's uh keep going. Okay, here we go. Back at Marcus. Oh, I'm actually controlling him now. Okay, we have got some hello time and there's just a beam? That seems dangerous. Piano and something on the ground. All right, well, speaking of something on the ground, I see you. <laughs> I see you. Detroit today. Android riot. Oh, I have to see what this is. A number of Detroit neighborhoods were brutally vandalized last night with Cyberlife stores broken into and the entire stock of androids stolen. But this wasn't everyday criminality. The perpetrators were thought to be androids. Though the police have yet to issue an official statement, leaked CCTV, Footage from the surrounding area shows a number of androids emerging from manhole covers and smashing store windows. The worst incident was in Capitol Park, oh boy, here we go, where police attended the scene and were confronted by androids behaving violently. Officers had no choice but to open fire. That didn't happen. There was no... what? Which are thought to be suffering from some kind of behavioral bug. An eyewitness, who asked to remain anonymous, said, I was personally attacked by the ringleader. It threatened me with a knife. I was so terrified. The rest of the allegation remains unconfirmed. We have no reason to disbelieve a human witness as to the behavior of a deranged machine. I didn't do any of those things. The Eastern Space Race. Russia and China's androids face off. Only two countries have android industries that rival the United States, Russia and China and they are locked in a fierce competition to become the world's predominant eastern economy, which continues to overtake the western hemisphere by leaps and bounds. Cyberlife's almost human model of android design complements America's service economy. Russia and China have also developed androids that reflect their national economies. Bear and soup dumpling? Just a big soup dumpling mech? After failing to emulate the blue blood model of design, Russia's android manufacturers rely on more traditional construction methods. The resulting machines are less anthropic, but capable of operating in cold and inhospitable conditions. China's androids use an alternative blue blood fluid with less upfront power generation, but greater efficiency. The results are androids capable of operating for months without supervision or recharging in China's vast rural areas. Who is winning the new space race? With everybody going in different directions, it's too soon to tell. I can tell you that article was clickbait is what that was. Florida? Oh, take. Hmm. Okay, put back. <laughs> we had a little reflection time. So we'll go over to the piano. Get my alone time in. Oh, it responds with how I tap. Oh, can I? Oh, 
Oh, the faster you tap on the uh, pad on the controller, the faster Marcus plays. Or you can not tap it. Oh, that's so cool. Never mind, we're just walking out on this beam. Marcus? Oh, hey, North. I was wondering where you were. I made this really cool bomb I wanted to show you. Just trying to think, I guess. I needed to think. I like it here. I come here often. It's like being alone with the world. We freed hundreds of our people, and they're still coming from all over the city. Those who dream of freedom come to Jericho. Something's changing. You seem preoccupied. Oh, followers, yeah. They all obey me. They follow me without question. And that much power feels good and scary at the same time. All the media are talking about what we did last night. The humans are terrified. They're afraid of a civil war. Many of our people were burned in response to what happened. The humans hate us. They'll never give us our freedom. I mean, I have to be optimistic, right? No, not all humans are the same. Yeah, because Carl. Some of them understand that they can't stop us from becoming free forever. You haven't said much about yourself since you've been with us. What was your life like before Jericho? Uh, truth. I was caring for an old man. He was like a father to me. He showed me that humans and androids can live together. Oh yeah, North passed. What about you? You never told me about your past. What did you do before? I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, she's definitely the droid from the eating club. That android you were looking at in the store. She reminded you of who you were, didn't she? Yo, trust, we have to. North, we're fighting together. We have to know things about each other to trust each other. I was nothing. A doll in a distributor program to satisfy humans. Just a toy designed for their pleasure. One day I was with a man who rented me. And without knowing why, I realized I couldn't take it anymore. I strangled him and I ran away. There, now you know everything. I shouldn't have told you. No, North, it's okay. That's communication, girl. And that's how you connect. For dead in his studio. I saw your memories too. The Eden Club. The death of that man. I felt like I was there with you. North. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Whoa! Oh, 
Simon! Yeah, that's a well-earned hug. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots! We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Not a lot of time for video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Oh, thank God, I don't need pants now. Hey, JC! What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a production of broadcast. Yeah, now uh, sing music. It's a production of broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots! It's a production of broadcast. Now here to ask and answer one simple question. It's a production of broadcast. <laughs>